This last point at the back, it says someday she's going to find the killer and make him pay, which I'm just like, with what skills? Not gonna lie, they had me in the first half. She had me in the first half. Can Miss Grace catch a break? Like, can she catch a break? I don't know where the, what direction this book is going in. Like, I'm clueless at this point. Alex from Twisted Love is in here? The romance subplot can go. Like, we don't need it. Hey book lovers, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Mar and honestly for this week's video, I didn't really have like a themed video or structured reading vlog planned or anything. I was really just thinking this week would be a mood reading week and something came about me and I was really itching to read books by Ali Carter. And one of the core middle school memories I have is pretty much picking up my first Ali Carter book and reading it all the way through, falling in love with this book, and then picking up every other book that was in the book series. The book series I am talking about is the Gallagher Girl series. So I have the box set for the three books and then I also have the last three books in the series and you can tell that they're very much well loved. But this was the book series that I think shaped my love for reading in the sense of like reading can be, you know, a form of entertainment. This was like my first go into young adults romance. I will never talk bad about the series, even though I know it's a bit cheesy. It can be a bit cringy. It is like a core memory of mine growing up. I always go back to it. I always reread it. And overall, it's a good time. It's for the young teenage girls who were hopeless romantics, and that was me growing up. This book series shaped who I am today. But one thing about Ali Carter is that throughout like the mid 2000s and all that, she was pumping out book series. Like she pumped out the Gallagher Girl series, and she also then had two other series. The first one being the High Society series, and the next one being the Embassy Row series. Growing up, I remember seeing those book series as well, but I believe I only read the first books of each of those series. So I read the first book in High Society, and then I read the first one in the Embassy Row series, which is called All Fell Down. And for me, I don't know what it is about these book series, but for me, like they just didn't shape core memories. For this video, we are going to be reading the High Society and the Embassy Row series. I took it upon myself to pretty much buy every single Ali Carter book there is. So I have the three books in the trilogy of the High Society, and then I also have the three books in the All Fall Down series. Originally, I, I've i had this first book since probably I was like since middle school. And then All Fall Down, I didn't actually have this book. I founded this at a used book sale this year. I just remember seeing this cover at Indigo and all the bookstores out there for such a long time. And then they just haven't restocked any Ali Carter books or anything at any bookstore that I've been to as of recently. And so I'm just like, oh, we are now at this point where Ali Carter is not the starring book in the young adult section. And that that seriously hurt me. That hurt me in the chest. I also just realized I forgot to explain what the book series are about. For those of you who Ali Carter did not shape a core memory into, pretty much her books are about like young teenage girls who are, you know, who are special, I guess. I I don't know. The Gallagher Girl series is about this girls' private school called the Gallagher Academy for Exceptional Young Women. Her main character, Cammy, attends a school. Her mother is the headmistress of the school, and pretty much it's a school for spies. And so they learn like covert operations, they learn all of these different spy techniques. And it's very much a school that is sort of about woman empowerment. It's very much emphasized that it's like it's like it's a school that trains spies because in the real world, like no one 
would really suspect a teenage girl to be a spy. It does sort of read like fan fiction. It's a very easy read. And then obviously there's a romance subplot throughout this whole book series. This is what set the standard for guys for me. Nobody compares to Zachary Good. Honestly, the t- the twists and turns and like the just the concept of like each book as well is really interesting. Again, this shaped like a core piece of myself, so it's like I can only speak highly of these books. The next book series we have is the High Society series, and there's three books in the series, and then there's also like a novella that the crossover between this series and the Gallagher Girl series. This series is about this group of teenage con artists, thieves. What they do is they steal and recover art. The main character of this book is Katarina Bishop and she is like the daughter of one of like the best like thieves in the world or something. In the first book she's tasked with uncovering these five like really prestigious art pieces and then she later learns that like they are art pieces from like like World War II Nazi Germany. When the Nazis like stole art from people. I'm not really, I'm not, I'm not explaining this well, but pretty much it's about these teenage con artists who are tasked with stealing and retrieving art. The Embassy Row series is pretty much about this girl named Grace who has pretty much grown up living in this country called Adria. And in Adria, every country has like an embassy. In this book series, it's about this girl named Grace who is living in this country called Adria and she's living on the U.S. embassy. In Adria, there's this area called the Embassy Row. So pretty much it's a whole lineup of just different embassies. Throughout this book, she's trying to figure out what happened in her past, what happened at the embassy a couple years ago with her mom. And at the same time, she's trying to make new friends with the kids at the embassies without trying to like start World War III and all that because politics. I was wholeheartedly a Gallagher girl, Stan. Like that was the book series I probably reread so many times. It's like that I, at this point, practically know it by heart. Um, but the other two series they never unlocked a core memory for me. So for this reading log, I want to see if they will make a core memory for me or not as a 23 year old girl. For this week, I am going to be reading the Ali Carter High Society series and the Embassy Row series. We'll see for this video how far I get and if I like these books. Without further ado, let's get into the reading vlog. first book I'm reading is The High Society by Ali Carter. One thing about me is I am Ali Carter's number one fan and number one stan. If Ali Carter has no fans, I am dead because she is a woman who raised me. I started reading The High Society. I'm like almost done it. I'm at page 227, so chapter 30 of this book already. And overall, I'm just like, like, I'm just wondering like why I didn't read this like as a kid like I just don't understand like what was going on in my head because I'm like eating this up right now I feel like Ali Carter books are really easy to understand so it's like if I say too much I'm practically giving the plot away but one thing about the high society is that these books I would say are a bit more romance tropey than the Gallagher Girl series this one is definitely more like love triangly um there's a lot of romantic tension in this one between Kat and this guy named Hale. I'm just gonna continue reading The High Society and I'll let you know my thoughts, but this is really, this video's for me. This video's for me and my inner child. This video has literally been filmed like in out of order and all that, so that's my bad. I just finished The High Society and I'm already on to the second book, which is Uncommon Criminals. And for the High Society, I believe I gave this 4.25 stars. I enjoyed this way more than I did as a kid. I remember trying to read this as a kid and it just like nothing stuck with me. I don't know why exactly, but this book, I really like the plot of it. I think the pacing was really good. One thing about this book is that 
I didn't remember how much tension there was in this book between the character of Kat and Hale. I know Hale was always like very charismatic and cocky and like, you know, just like the guy every girl is supposed to swoon over and all that. I remember Hale always being that character. Like, come on, what is there not to like about Hale? Like, he's rich. He's good looking. Like, he is the fantasy of any teenage girl. Even though this whole book is about a heist that they have to do and all that, it's sort of like romance subplot between Hale and Kat, and it's very much slow burn. So I feel like if you're looking for a slow burn romance and you're also interested in reading about a heist, highly recommend High Society. The only thing about this book is like I just didn't remember how many like side characters there were. And when I'm saying like side characters, it's like they're truly side characters. Like they are pretty much there for the plot and you don't learn too much about them. For any plot hole that may arise, these side characters are what fills those plot holes. Is this book in a way in any means realistic? Absolutely not. There are so many moments where you have to suspend suspend disbelief. There's in no means is any of this realistic at all. But overall, I had a great time reading this book. That's my review on The High Society. Okay, so I made it to about pay to about a bit more than 30% of this way through the book. And when I was reading High Society, that one felt like a reread because I remembered more about the plot and all of that when I was rereading it and the characters. But for this one, it feels like a reread, but like also not a reread. Like there are some parts in this book where it's like, I remember reading this. And then there are other parts where I'm just like, I have no recollection of this at all. One could be selective memory in the sense that maybe I did read this book, I just didn't engage with it at all, um, except for like a couple parts. But I think what happened when I read this book as a kid, I think I read the first couple chapters because I remember some of the characters. I remember Grace, I remember Alexia, I remember her mentioning her brother Jamie a lot and all that. And her brother Jamie is like, he's not living at the embassy or anything because he's like i don't know if he joined like the army or something because like grace is an army brat and all that and like so her dad like made them move around like living on army bases and all that because of him being in the army duh um grace is living at the embassy like by herself with her grandpa who is the u.s ambassador at this embassy i remember how the book starts and I think I remember how the book ends. The only explanation, to be quite honest, is that I read the first couple chapters, skimmed the rest of this book, barely, and then read like maybe like the last three chapters. There's a lot of things in this book that I just don't remember. And reading it, I'm just kind of like, oh, oh. But we'll get into that like when we get to my review of this book later. But yeah, there are just some moments where I'm just kind of like, that that was a choice. That was a choice. You made it. I just finished reading All Fall Down by Allie Carter. From my last update, I lied. I did not even get to the end of this book i think i just saw a spoiler online for how this book ended so that's why i knew the ending of this book but i'm pretty sure i only read the first couple chapters as a kid and i got bored overall i rated this a 3.75 stars compared to the other ali carter series this book is definitely a lot darker and a lot of it just has to do with there's more like underlying mystery involved in this book 
And pretty much it's about this girl named Grace who has pretty much been raised in this country of Adria living on the U.S. Embassy. So Grace, her and her brother grew up in this country until they move when she's like 13 or something to a different place. When she's 13, her mother ends up dying in an accident and it's pretty much so traumatic for Grace that she blocks out most of what happened to her mom. She suffers from like major PTSD and so like the night of her mother's death is just very unclear to her. So now she is like 16 in this book and she pretty much moves back into the embassy to live with her grandfather. While she's here, a lot of the suppressed memory she has of her mother's death start to come about and she's very much convinced that this scarred like man is the person that killed her mother. She thinks like she sees him at the embassy. She's just trying to uncover this mystery of what happened to her mother when she died. On the back of this, it pretty much describes her like this. Grace Blakely is absolutely certain of three things. One, she is not crazy. Two, her mother was murdered. Three, someday she's going to find the killer and make him pay. So like that's the elevator pitch of this book. But when it comes to like Grace's character in itself, like when she's first introduced, her attitude of just like being at the embassy is borderline just like annoying because you can tell she doesn't want to be there. She doesn't want to really make any friends or get close to people. She's very closed off from people. And another thing about Grace is that she's also a very like impulsive, spontaneous person. So a lot of times she'll do things that ultimately like end up getting her hurt. Everyone at the embassy is kind of just like, this girl is like a loose cannon. Like, it's like, you really don't know what to expect from this girl. I think one of the reasons why, like, I DNF this book so quickly as a kid was just because, like, the girl was unlikable. But then as you get onto, like, the book, you sort of understand, like, where she's coming from and, like, why she acts this way around people. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that it's just, like, throughout this whole book, you feel like you're being gaslighted. Like, you, like, genuinely everyone in this whole book just it feels like they're gaslighting grace they're just like you never saw a scarred man like you what you're talking about with your mother's like death like you're a crazy person like that is the attitude almost every character is giving her in this book series and so as you're reading it like it genuinely feels like you're also being gaslighted by these characters and then you start to be convinced like okay like is this main character actually crazy or not this last point at the back it says someday she's going to find the killer and make him pay, which I'm just like, with what skills, like with what skills does like Grace have? Like, what do you mean she's going to make him pay? Like if she finds this man, like what do you think she's going to do? Like if anything, this girl is really just trying to find closure on like what happened to her mom and all that. And all of the characters in this book are kind of just like making it hard for her. They're sort of like, they're they're gaslighting her a lot in this book. Overall, it's just like I can see why I didn't like this book as a kid and I think it's just cuz it was darker. And I also think with the Embassy Rose series as well, there's just like a lot of political talk and you know representation of countries that I'm not necessarily sure about the representation. Some of them did come across a little bit stereotypical, but at the same time, I'm also not a person from these respective countries or anything like that. Personally, for me, I was sort of like, I'm I'm not sure if it's aged well. Now in the political climate of the world, there is mention of Israel and Israel representation in this book. And just to be conscious of, you know, just like the Israel-Palestine conflict and all of that. It's just, I just don't think this book has aged that well. That's all I'm going to say about that. But when it comes to just like plot, it's like, there was enough that it made me engage to read this. But at the same time, it's like, I don't think this is Ali Carter's like, best piece of work. So yeah, that's what I have to say about All Fall Down, but I really thought that like Grace's brother Jamie appears in this book. He doesn't at all. 
like I don't know why I thought he appeared in this book maybe I was getting Jamie confused with Alexi because Alexi is sort of like her brother's like best friend he's from Russia and he loves lives on the Russian embassy and all that so I was just like confused I thought I really thought like I gaslighted myself into thinking her brother appears in this book, which he does not. But yeah, I'm gonna get started on. I'm reading like these these series in like tandem. I'm gonna get started on the Heist Society book two, and then I'm going to read the next book in this series. So I just made it to chapter 15 of this book, so I'm at page 107. Not gonna lie, they had me in the first half. She had me in the first half. I was really like, wow, like this first part of the story is wrapping up quickly, but no, 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 that is not the case. One thing about that I love about high society is just how fun it is, even though they're high stakes they're they're very unserious if that makes sense like the names of their cons and all of that are just like really funny really easy to grasp you really have to suspend disbelief when you're reading all these things because it's sort of like there is no way these cons would work in real life or anything but it's just a really fun read and i would say like the first book is definitely more about sort of cat and her being at a crossroads where this is book is sort of about Kat finally picking a path, but she's still trying to come to terms with it. And that's all I'm gonna say without like giving any spoilers or anything. I'll probably finish this this afternoon. I think I came outside just to like say I touched some grass today and all that because I feel like most of the clips you've seen of me today, I've been in my room and so came outside to my backyard and also it's super nice out right now and yeah I'm just gonna continue reading this and I'll update you when I update you So I just finished reading Uncommon Criminals by Ali Carter. So let's talk about it. I wasn't sure for this video if I was going to like do spoilers or anything like that. So, but I decided to split it kind of like half and half. Starting now is when the spoilers are going to come in and all of that. So if you don't want to hear any spoilers as to what happens in this book series, click out, click out of this video, go watch a different one. I won't be offended if you don't want to be spoiled by this, by me or about this book series or anything at all because I will be doing spoilers for the off the embassy row series and for this one but uncommon criminals let's talk about it so pretty much this book takes place I believe it's a couple months after or it might even be a couple days after the first book and so in the first book it ends with Kat, Hale, the rest of their little crew they pull off the biggest heist pretty much ever which is you know going into the henley and retrieving the art pieces from the henley so in this one cat is pretty much tasked with retrieving cleopatra's emerald it has a lot of historical value and all that in like egyptian art history all of that stuff asked to pretty much retrieve this emerald because this lady says that her family is the one that are the people that discovered this emerald cat agrees to recover the pearl for this lady the heist becomes successful and then she realizes that this lady, what she was telling her was completely fake. And so that's the second half of the book where Kat is trying to pretty much undo what she previously done. This book was really, it was a really fun read. When I was reading the first half of it, I was kind of just like, oh, this is moving like really quickly. When I got to the second half, I was like, 
oh, this makes a lot more sense now. The highs are the probably the funnest things to read just because everything is so unrealistic when it comes to the highs. And it's just like enjoyable, entertaining, engaging. But in this book, there are definitely a lot more moments with Kat and Hale. I even though I never like fully read this book series, I would pass by the fandom spaces and I just remember everyone raving over Kat and Hale's relationship. So I just like automatically thought that like they were immediately just like boyfriend and girlfriend in these series. But no, like this is a full on slow burn, you know, it's like they both truly care for each other and there's definitely things between them happening. It's just, you know, none of them are really like acting on that instinct even though they want to. So you get more moments between them and uncommon criminals. Ali Carter is really good at just like writing romances that like make you want to kick your feet and like make your heart flutter. Is the dialogue a bit cringy sometimes? Yes, it's really unserious and that's why I enjoy them so much. I did like the first book a bit better when it came to like plot and all of that and I think it's just because I like the pacing in the first book a bit better. This one the pacing it was just super fast like the entire book it just felt like you were you were just like on a train the entire book and you were going like 100 kilometers an hour. Those are my thoughts on Uncommon Criminals. I gave this a 4.5 stars so I personally really enjoyed it. I enjoyed the characterization and development of Kat and all of that and her, you know, trying to figure out, you know, sort of where she is in her life, what her goals are, like if she, you know, if she really likes what she's doing. That is what I thought I think of Uncommon Criminals and the next book I'm going to read is the second book of the Embassy Row series. the first 70 pages of the second book in the Embassy Row series and I already have thoughts. A lot of these thoughts I will get into like once I finish this book but for my thoughts right now is just I'm kind of confused by this series in the sense that it it doesn't feel like an Allie Carter series, but it also does feel like an Allie Carter series, if that makes sense. It's just, I don't know, like compared to the other two book series she had, this one is definitely a lot darker. I've learned that from the first book. In the first 70 pages of this book, like Grace is still spiraling after what she learned in the first book. Like this one takes place like literally right off the bat from where the first book ended. Spoilers again if you don't want to hear them click away but spoilers to the ending of the first book. Pretty much Grace learns that she was the one who ended up killing her mom. The whole incident that she suppressed in her mind was due to the fact that she was the one that killed her mom. What happened was the prime minister of Adria, the country that they are living in, he sent the his security detail, aka the scarred man, aka Dominic, to go and kill Grace's mother. But it turns out that Dominic and Grace's mother like, they grew up together on Adria as children. They were, like, childhood friends to lovers kind of thing, but it just never ended up working out for them. And so, like, he goes to kill her, a.k.a. They hatched this plan to stage Grace's mother's death. And while they're doing that, Grace accidentally stumbles upon them. So she thinks that Dominic is is about to kill her mom so she finds a gun that i guess is somehow fully loaded and all of that and she s tries to pretty much shoot dominic but her mom tries to stop her but she ends up being too late and so grace is the one that accidentally kills her mom because her mom gets caught in the crossfire that is why grace has like she, like a lot of her memories have been suppressed after this her mother's death happens grace is like sent to like i believe it's like a hospital or something and she's pretty much like 
force-fed drugs and all that and pretty much her mind is just a messed up place and she just can't come to terms like with what she did to her mother and all of that. Grace returns to Adria and then she learns all this stuff, right? And so at the end of the first book, that's when like Grace learns actually like what happens and all of that and pretty much like everyone around her. So like her brother and dad and like grandpa, like they all knew that she was the one that pulled the trigger that killed like their mom. It's just like everyone just like lied to her and gaslighted her and sort of just like let her think what she wanted to think. So like Grace thought that this scarred man killed her mother and all that when in reality it was her. Anyways, that was a really long explanation as to what happened with Grace's mom. So in this book, she's literally going through it. Like she is still trying to process what happened. There's this character named Miss Chancellor. I didn't get into her in the first book because she just didn't seem that important and even now I'm almost sort of like I I just don't like her as a character. So Miss Chancellor is like the chief of like staff of like the U.S. Embassy of the U.S. Ambassador. This Miss Chancellor character, she decides that this would be the best time to unveil Grace's mother's secret to Grace in which apparently Grace's mother was a part of this thing called the society and it's like this secret society in the country of Adria that pretty much recruits women who have like long ties or a lot of long ties to Adria. It's not really clear as to like what this secret society does. It's just really weird. Now there's a whole secret society thing happening and then Grace is like spiraling in this book because she just learned like for the past couple years she was like living on this lie and then now she has another secret to keep and all of that. And so that's like the one thought I have is I'm just like, why are we making Grace go through it? Like, we know she is not mentally stable enough for to keep another secret and you're bombarding her with this new secret she has to keep. That's the first thought I have. And then in this book as well, there are new characters coming in. The first one being her brother. So in this book, her brother shows up. I, for some reason, I thought her brother shows up in the first book. He does not, but he shows up in this one. And then there's also another character named, is it John? Is his name John? It's a J name. Anyways, it's like, I think it's John Spencer or something like that. I don't know. And, but they like, they, he goes by Spencer. There's like some weird romantic tension between him and Grace as well. I just this is just the first 70 pages and I feel like I've like already shared a lot as to what's happening in the second book but I don't know it's just I'm confused I'm I'm confused in this book in particular as I don't know where what direction we're headed and I'm sort of just like can Miss Grace catch a break like can she catch a break? Like in the first book, Grace was already sort of unlikable and all that. But then once like the whole big secret is revealed, you're sort of like, okay, now I understand why she has these motivations. In this one, she's also just as unlikable in the first book. And so like, I feel like if I read this when I was younger, I probably would have DNF because I just wouldn't be able to handle her personality. Like I just would not be able to understand where she's coming from. But it's like, Every time I read this now, I have to, like, remember and remind myself to, like, read it in the context of, like, yeah, this girl has literally been gaslighted for the past, like, what, like, three years of her life. So, obviously, she's going to be a nervous wreck and all that. And I'm just, like, why are they, why are we making her go through it some more? Like, she needs to be in therapy. She needs to get out of this country. She needs to just not talk to people for a bit. Those are the thoughts I have right now. I feel like I thought this video was going to be a lot shorter, but from the amount of rants I've filmed already, I know this is going to be like a two hour long video. the 
last clip that I filmed. I said I would wait till the end of this book to update you on my thoughts, but literally so much has happened. Jamie is back, so her brother is back in Adria, and when he comes back to Adria, he brings a friend named John Spencer. John Spencer says he's like, his mother was from Adria or whatever, so he's like, also part Adrian, but he's like never been to the country and all that. Not that that matters right now, but pretty much an event happens and the next day John Spencer ends up dead. So Grace literally cannot catch a break. Like, and another thing, the night before his death or whatever, John Spencer and Grace end up kissing, which like, was just so weird. There's this whole love triangle thing because Alexei shows up. So the Russian boy from the first book, he shows up. And so there's this whole messy fight between them and all of that. And pretty much things are pointing in the sense that they think that Alexei is the one that killed John Spencer. Now throughout this, like from where I got, I'm like halfway, I'm almost halfway through the book. I'm at like page 151. Um, it's like the characters are dealing with sort of just like the guilt and the grief of what happened to Spence. Now there's like bad diplomatic relations and all that between the Russians and the US because they believe that Alexei was the one that killed John Spencer. I'm just sort of like lost in the sense of like, what what is happening to in the plot right now? Because at the beginning of this book, we're introduced to like that secret society for Adrian woman that Grace's mother was a part of. And like that doesn't get talked about again. Now we are on a murder mystery. Grace is just as unstable as she was in the first book. Her brother is now sort of unstable because he is also like a part of this trauma, that the shared trauma that they have. Like obviously he wasn't the one that killed their mother, but it's like his mother also died. He knows his sister did it. And then he brings like a friend home who, who ends up dead. It's like, these characters are just going through it and I'm at that point where I'm just like what is happening in the plot right now all I'm saying is like please like let Grace be happy like like why is this girl going through it girly is 16 years old she doesn't need to be going through this shit right now I don't know where the what direction this book is going in like I'm clueless at this point I didn't realize Alexi's last name was Volkov. So there's an Alexi Volkov. There's an Alex Volkov in this book. Alex from Twisted Love is in here? I just finished See How They Run. So let's talk about it. I said that I didn't know what direction that the book was going in for the second half and to be perfectly honest I don't think the book knew what it was doing either because it turned into this weird mystery thing you know of who killed Spence and then it turned into a treasure hunt and then it turned into another conspiracy theory gaslight plot and then we get to the final plot twist at the end that I clocked from the beginning. Grace learns that she is the long lost princess of the country of Adria. One thing about this book series is that unfortunately for Allie Carter, I don't think she's great at world building. I feel like she added a lot of elements that worked well in the Gallagher Girl Galaga Girl series, but then when she did it in this one, it's just like nothing was aligning. Like the stars were not aligning, unfortunately. And so you just get a bunch of different things that sort of make sense in the end, but not really. So pretty much in this book, again, Adria is like this fictional 
place in Europe. They have like a lot of rich history and all that. They had like a royal family that pretty much ruled this land for many, many years. And then one day the palace gets stormed into a coup is staged. The royal family ends up dead. It's like repeated to you multiple times throughout this whole series. So throughout the first book and this book, like the story of the royal family has like is always being told to you at the end of it grace learns the baby in this royal family that got murdered however many years ago the baby survived and so the lineage of this royal family has continued on grace is pretty much the long-lost princess of adria that's what she learns again nothing in this book stuck in my brain even after reading it and even after being told multiple times on what happens in their history, I clocked the plot twist. I was like, you know what? This this story has been told to us so many times that I'm just like, if Grace isn't a part of this royal family somehow, I don't know what we're doing. I think Ali Carter for this one, she put too many eggs in one basket, okay? Like, there are... I see a lot of similarities from this one to the Gallagher Girl series. She reuses a lot of the same tropes and plot points. I think she just uses so many tropes that, like, I felt were, like, deemed unnecessary. Like, even, like, the romance subplots were deemed so unnecessary. She has a lot of moments with Alexi in this book, but it's, like, they don't really do anything to further it. So I'm just sort of, like, why is she trying to push this romance when, like, in this book, Grace and Lexi, they have no romantic tension. There's no r actual reason as to why, like, those two should be together at all. She had more tension with Megan in the first book. Like, I really thought this was going to be turning, like, into a lesbian romance because her and Megan had more banter than her and Alexi or her and, like, any other male character in this book series. If you're going to add a romance subplot, like do it well because one thing about Allie Carter is like usually she does it well like and this one like I felt nothing there is nothing happening another thing I have about this is that this book series is also very pro military I guess because like Grace is an army brat so her dad is in the U.S. military her brother is planning to go into the U.S. military. So it's very, like, army-based, not in the BTS variety sort of way, but it's, like, there's a lot to do with, like, American patriotism and a lot of pro-military sentiments, I would say, in this book series. And then there's also the addition of, like, adding into this book series, like, having Israel be one of the countries that have an embassy in the country of Adria and then there being like Israeli characters and all that mind you these characters are like mixed so they're like Israeli Brazilian characters it's just like these were choices that were like that were done and I don't think it was they were like accidental coincidences or anything like that like she purposely chose these countries and these representations it was sort of like these choices were made and I just don't think that they aged well I, I have many criticisms to this book in particular I rated this a 3.75 stars, but now I think I might lower the rating to a 3.25 stars, which is really unfortunate because I didn't mind the first book. This one, it just, it was just so many things happened, but at the same time, it felt like nothing happened at all, or, or it could have just been like 100 pages shorter, if that makes sense. I'm questioning pretty much everything that happens in this book, and so yeah. And also with the world building and all that, I'm back to this point. This is like the longest rant thing, like video I've ever probably made in my life because I'm seriously just going crazy after reading this book. But a lot of the world building or like the descriptions of the environment and she pretty much reuses like every single paragraph. The amount of time she describes the streets as gaslit is insane. The amount of times I've read the word gaslit in this book 
in the first book is genuinely insane. And every time I read that, it triggers me because I genuinely feel like I'm being gaslighted throughout this whole book because like Grace is going through it. The other characters are going through it. I'm going through it. I'm just like, maybe I'm the one who killed Grace's mom. Like maybe I'm the one who killed Spencer because genuinely I don't know who did. And in this book, I also don't even think we learned who killed Spence like at all. So he's just dead. Like, he's just dead. We don't know who the killer is. Um, Even though for half of this book, we were trying to figure out who the killer was. I feel like the more I talk about this, the more I'm going to go insane. So I'm going to read the next, the last book in the High Society series. And yeah, try not to go insane over this book. I'm like already 50% of the way through this book right now and I'm eating this up like it's not like the previous two high society books I would say I will say it's very different and I'll I'll mention like what I mean by that like in my later review for this but I really do think I'm probably gonna like try to finish this in the next hour or so because like everything about this book I'm like literally eating up right now. Like Ali Carter cooked with this book. So ignore what I said about the second book of the Embassy Rose series. This is this is the book where everything is at. Okay, this is the book. I'm so confused right now what just happened um anyways I'm at about like page 300 or so of this book and like if you know you know but what hey friends so I just finished reading perfect scoundrels and here is my review of it I gave this a 4.25 stars Overall, I had a really fun time reading it and all of that, and with this book, this is technically the third book in the High Society series. It's just, with the High Society series, it's set up a bit differently as compared to, like, the other series Ali Hutter has and, like, what normal book series do in which there's, like, a linear plot. So it's, like, in the first book, you're kind of just getting started. The second book sort of adds to the plot. And then the third book is, like, the grand finale sort of thing, where it's, like, the high society books, each one of them just feels, like, separate. So it's, like, you could pick up these books out of order and you would have a fun time reading it. Like, obviously, you would be spoiled by what happens in the previous books if you if you picked up this book. But it's like you wouldn't be entirely lost as to what happens. This is the third and final book. And this one is really just for the people who ship Cat and Hale. So in this one, they finally become, they make it official. They're dating their boyfriend and girlfriend and all of that. And this one deals primarily with Hale's situation. What happens in this one is that Hale's grandmother dies and in her will, she pretty much passes on the family company to Hale. And one thing about Hale is that Hale is, he comes from this uber rich family. They have like a phone company he's practically like a billion his families are like practically billionaires or whatever so it's like he comes from a really rich family so now he now has to deal with being like with the family business and all that and so a lot of it more so has to do with like Hale and Kat's relationship and Kat trying to figure out sort of what's going on with Hale's family just like a lot of rich people dynamics and sort of all of that stuff the previous two were more heist focused and more in the world of cat where this one is more in the world of Hale's so overall I personally really enjoyed it I thought it was a fun read I understand the girlies who like Hale but personally to me when I'm ranking like the uh, the Ali Carter boys 
my top guy is still Zach. It's still Zachary Good. Like, he can do no wrong in my eyes. Like, he is the standard for men. Hale, I would say, like, I like him and all that, and I see the appeal to him. It's just there were some moments in this book, especially, where it's like, I was sort of like, I didn't like the way he acted and all that, especially towards Kat. But if I was dating someone who was rich, I would be like, fair enough, fair enough. But one thing about Ali Hotter books is like, these will never pass the Bechdel test at all. Like a man is always going to be mentioned. I don't have any too, too many criticism. I think this one, you know, sort of wraps up the, the romance of cat and hail in a really cute way and this one i feel like was definitely more so like fan service i think what i like about the heist society series is that like everything's open-ended so it's like it's not like she like purposely like makes an epilogue or anything and like ties everything up with a happily ever after it's like i feel like if she wanted to she could literally go back and like make more books in this series i think this could even be like a six book series if it were up to me overall i had a fun time reading it this was definitely more fan servicey even this one she says like she dedicates it to all the hail girlies the only criticism i have of this book is like the ending the ending was just kind of like abrupt like when it came to like the final sort of heist plan and all that like i just I was kind of taken aback when I was reading and I was sort of like, where are we in the plot? Like, what is happening right now? I don't have like a really long review of this one just because overall I just had a fun time reading. These books aren't super serious and all that. So yeah, the last book I have to read for this video is the last book in the off in the Embassy Row series. So I'm going to get started on, on that sometime soon. I'm going to take a break from reading for a bit because I've been reading for like six straight hours. So, like, this ultimately just ended up being the 24-hour reading challenge. So, um, yeah, let's, I'll get onto that in the next clip. have made it to the final book for this video and that is take the key and lock her which is the third and final book of the embassy row series by ali carter and overall i would say that this book is probably the closest book to the Ali Carter that I know and love. I ate this one up. The previous two books, I had the attitude of sort of like, what am I reading? This one, I ate it up so quickly. I ate everything up. Just everything about it, this one made me the most nostalgic when it came when it came to just like reading an Ali Carter book, I feel like this one has a lot of elements that were very similar to the Gallagher Girl series. So maybe that's why I'm biased when this is my favorite book out of all three books of the Embassy series. I gave this four stars in my review. And overall, I just think this one has the best sort of pacing out of all of the other books. And I think there's more so of a plot that makes sense. I'm just going to say the things that I liked and what I didn't like about this book. So for things that I liked, I liked the plot of it. The plot moved fast. There were tons of plot twists. I think this was where Ali Carter sort of finally figured out. I feel like with Ali Carter, I feel like she had this book already planned and she knew exactly where the characters were going to end up. So the first two books was her trying to figure out how she was going to get to this point. And so I think that's why the first two books work a lot slower. And I feel like the writing is definitely weaker in the first two books because this one, everything just moved really quickly, really fast. And I would say for this one as well, Grace isn't as annoying 
like the first two books she is pretty annoying because she's just like a self-loathing character she has never seen happiness in her life like that is her sort of attitude in the first two books this one she's still has that attitude it's just less annoying it's very much dialed back like she is still very much self-loathing and you know she feels bad about herself it's just done i think in a better way because this one there weren't any moments where i was like getting super frustrated reading about grace and also in this book she adds a new character which is the prince of the kingdom of adria which is Thomas and let me just say Thomas I will I will ride or die for Thomas like he is probably one of the best additions to this book series even though he appears for like a total of maybe like 10 minutes when you're reading but he is probably like one of the best additions when it comes to this book series I feel like with the characters because the main character is so unlikable you have to find characters like side characters that are more likable than her so it's like a lot of the side characters that are actually likable don't get a lot of like screen time and all that which doesn't make sense to me overall what things i liked about this book just like the plot itself like i the pacing the plot and all that were like i think that's what made this one stand out compared to the first two books now for stuff i didn't like the first one being her relationship with Alexi. So throughout the whole books, Allie Carter is hinting that Alexi is going to be the guy that like that Grace is going to fall for. It's barely a slow burn when it comes to like her falling for Alexi. It doesn't make sense to me and it's just Alexi as a main like the male like love interest he's weak compared to like all of the other love interests that are in Allie Carter's other series. Like again, when it comes to ranking, Zachary Wood at the top, he is the standard. He is the moment. The next one is Pale from High Society. Okay. Like he, like he has things going for him. There are things that I don't like about him, but overall, like I see the appeal to him. Alexi, he's like down here, like I don't see the appeal to Alexi at all. Like, he's practically just an alpha male. So, it's like everything he does is like in the best interest for Grace, but he just comes off as just overprotective. He doesn't let her live. He gets moody every time. He gets moody and jealous every time she touches another man. Nothing about him is like attractive to me. So, I don't know. If you're an Alexi girl, I'm sorry, but I just, I don't see it. I don't understand the appeal and all of that. Like, there's just nothing about Alexi that, like, makes me like him. I just didn't see the appeal of Grace and Alexi. Like, clap if you want to see Grace and Alexi together. Look how far my hands are. Not me. I truly did not care about that relationship i was like honestly i was like the romance subplot can go like we don't need it if anything the romance the romance subplot should have been between grace and megan because they had more banter and chemistry than alexi and grace so um yeah but a male character i do like is jamie like i love the addition of Jamie in the second book and Jamie he is like a good character he's one of my favorite characters when he's not being an idiot so unfortunately in the second book he is an idiot for a good majority of the book but you know I'm willing to overlook that because overall his motivations his intentions are good and you can see that in him where it's like Alexi you genuinely can't you don't even know if his intentions are good or not or if it's just made out of jealousy or just him being like really territorial over grace but anyways jamie love him he shows up for maybe like five minutes in this book i need more jamie okay like i don't care about the other characters like i truly was like okay jamie's a character i can get behind and all of that anyways other things i don't like i mean i feel like the writing in this one when it just came to descriptiveness 
was very much lacking. Like the thing with creating a new country and a new sort of political world and all that, you have to do some world building. And the thing is like, Ali Carter does enough world building for Adria in which you can like kind of understand that it's like, it's a European country. They have a monarchy kingdom sort of thing and a prime minister thing, you know, and there is like a lot of history and all of that. So it's like every single like time she tries to describe age Adria, it's the exact same description. Like, there's not much she can add. Like, there's nothing that she could really add other than the fact that it's like there are cobblestone pathways, all the streets are gas lit, the palace is really old, there are underground tunnels. Like, that's pretty much what you get every single time you try to read a descriptive paragraph about this country. And then I would say the ending for this book as well, it is a bit rushed. Like, it happens very quickly. And in a way, it's a bit anticlimactic, if that makes sense. Like, it is not as strong as the finales in her other series. But, you know, it was done in a well enough way that there are, like, plot twists and all that that it's like, I didn't see coming and I, I didn't clock. But, yeah, it's like, Again, like, out of all three books, this one is probably my favorite book. It reminded me of the Allie Carter books that I know and love. Overall, gave it four stars. Had a fun time. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you made it this far, I don't know how long this video is going to be by the end of it. It, This feels like a two-hour long video. I pretty much spent the past two days trying to unlock core childhood memories, reading the High Society series and the Embassy Row series, and I managed to do some managed to make more memories um doing this video thank you so much for watching let me know in the comments below if you have any recollection of reading these books or if this is your first introduction to ali carter now i can say i've read all of ali carter's books that she's released so far and I don't know, maybe I'll do a whole like plot recap video of the Gallagher Girl series since that one still is in my mind, like rent free. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!